All right, boys, we are back, and it's time to head into the year 10 playoffs with our San Jose Sharks. The year that uh, we have to win the Stanley Cup or GM Superb, man, is fired. Ownership wants the cup or nothing else, all right? So I've arranged the team. We won the President's Trophy back-to-back -back years. Uh, a similar team than last year's, but out is Joffrey Lupul. In is Mangia Payne, so hopefully we can get some nice goal scoring. And in general, hopefully our team's a little bit older than last year, uh, so we're a little bit better. And we also have the depth for injuries. So before we get started in the whole... Um, the whole playoffs, I was seeing a comment in the last video about uh, Pete Walton and his shots. You guys want to see how many shots he takes because he only gets like three goals per season. You guys want to know if he's just missing the net or if he just, he never shoots it. Because I was asking the question in the last video about his shooting category. I mean, it looks decent. His shooting category does look decent. I'll just quickly bring it up. Pete Walton, right? I mean, I've seen, I mean, a wrist shot power 95, an accuracy of 88. On the first line, you'd expect he could get at least like 10 goals, 12 goals, right? But consistently, 4 goals, 8 goals, 3 goals, 3 goals, right? So, even with uh, Mangia Payne on that first line, maybe if we had another playmaker. But, uh, just to show you guys his shot and shooting percentage. Yeah, I mean, um, no, he doesn't take that many shots, does he? Only 54 shots. I mean, that's less than a, a shot per game. So, he really doesn't take shots. Uh, shooting percentage, 5.6%. Just compare it to, like, a Mangia Payne, for example, right? Somebody who takes a lot of shots. Uh, shots, 254. So, he takes, like, five times as many shots as uh, Pete Walton does. I wonder, like, what category, what individual stat really makes that happen? Is it, like, no, nah, his aggressiveness is down there at 61 I don't know, I think it's just the player type sniper. And then he's got the 99s everywhere, so that helps. Yeah, but uh, if we look at DeCall, who's also a playmaker, right? We take a look at DeCall, his shots. See, he's up there with 240 as well, so I don't know what it is about Pete Waltz, and he just does not like to shoot the puck. If you look at uh, Michael DeCall's stats, right, and then you compare them to Walton, what is it that DeCall has over Walton that it makes his shot come out? I mean, maybe it's the... Uh, the shooting category, I mean, that is a really good shooting category. Never mind, I take that back. But he is a playmaker, right? So that's interesting. But there you go. You guys wanted to see it. Uh, Pete Walton only had 54 shots on the net this year. Probably the least amount on our team. <laughs> Morrison had 46. Walton on the first line only had 54. All right, there you go. That'll tell you how many shots he takes. He does not like to take shots. And I guess it's for a good reason. He's got like a horrible shooting percentage. Where is it? Walton, 5.56%. All right, so there you go. I showed you guys that. Now let's just remember to also turn off the injuries and the automated goalie rotations. Let me just quickly do this. Settings, rules, injuries. All right, so the bane of my existence in GM mode, injuries. We know that they're going to happen. Hopefully we can just get a little bit lucky and they're not like injuries that last for like two months where they're out for the whole playoffs. So injuries are back on and automated goalie rotations are off. All right. So there you go. So let's take a look at our California opponents. For the fourth straight year, we got to travel down to California for a playoff game. I'm not liking it. At least we have home ice advantage, but that didn't help us out too much last year. So against the Anaheim Ducks, 42, 30, and 10. Now we're 10 years in, so I mean, Corey Perry and Ryan Getzlaff, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to be there. I, even if they are there, I don't think they're going to be effective like they would be in years one or two, right? So let's see here. First line. Yeah, I don't see... Corey Perry's still there. He is still there, but I don't see... Uh, what's his name? Uh, Ryan Getzlaff. So the first line, Kapanen, 86, Shinkarook. That's not Hunter Shinkarook. That's another Shinkarook. That's a Y instead of an I. Uh, Jalen Shinkarook. I don't even know. 85, Playmaker, and Emerson Edom, uh, 87, Sniper. So it's a good first line. You got a Playmaker, two-way forward, and Sniper in there. All right. Second line, Kyle Ocpozo. They signed Sam Reinhart in the uh, offseason and Corey Perry. Not a bad second line, but the power forward, remember, we don't really like power forwards as much because they don't really score. That's why we have a third line full of them. Uh, the f uh, third line, Saad, Benino, and uh, Smith Pelly. It's a very good third line, actually. That's almost, yeah, that's a really good third line. I take that back. It's a very good third line. And then the fourth line, Matt Bolesky, Saarolt, and Korpakovsky. So not a single 70 in that lineup. So going back to uh, last year against the LA Kings, you know, they had the studs. And they had a few 70 and 60 overall players back there. These guys, they don't have a single stud. Uh, 87 overall, I don't know if you guys would consider that studly. Uh, but they don't have like a 90 overall player or anything, right? But they do have depth. 
81 overall or better, basically, offensively. Defensively, uh, Hampus Lindholm, 88 overall offensive defenseman, and Lucas Spiza. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the greatest combination. Lindholm, I'd say, is good, but Spiza, 83, I'd say he's dropped off. It's also 10 years in, so he's a little bit older, I'd say. They got a lot of offensive defensemen on this team. Keith Yandel and Sammy Vatanen. So three offensive defensemen. Their power play might be good, but we should be able to get some goals for. Theodore is also an offensive defenseman, so they don't have a single uh, defensive defenseman in there. And the goaltender, is a Gibson? Yeah, it's Gibson. So 86 overall and Smith 81. So a deep team this year. They definitely have a team that can win. You know, if they were to, if they were to beat us in the first round, it would suck, but they actually have a deep team this year and a decent goal, 86 overall. I mean, Ernest Shirelli's only uh, 87, right, and he gets it done. So let's quickly show you our lineups. See what I mean? We don't have that uh, super stud on the first line either. We do have an 88. I think their best player was 87, but we have, you know, an 88 overall sniper, which I think they had uh, Corey Perry was an 87. Oh, you know what? Emerson Eden was 87 overall sniper too, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. So, you know what? That's what I mean. Their team actually looked pretty decent. But our depth will kill their depth. Our second line, Reed Boucher, DeCaul, and Couturier. I'm loving that second line. Third line is actually pretty similar, but I'd still give us the nod. 284s and an 85 power forward third line. And then the fourth line, the big red goof, Ernie and Palmieri. Palmieri going back against his old team. All right, and defensively, I think we have them covered defensively. Now, I was reading some of your comments. Some of you guys were saying Morrison, switch him out for Reinhardt. I'll do that if maybe we start to lose some games, but let's just, uh, I mean, he's been a part of the President's Trophy winning team two years in a row. And last year, it wasn't our goals against that made us lose the LA Kings. It was our goals for, or lack of goals for, against Jonathan Quick. They only have an 86 overall goaltender in there. We're first for goals for. We're first for goals against. Let's just see what this team can do for us, all right? And goaltender, Ernest Shirelli, is in the net. All right, so there you go. There's the setup. There's the intro. Now we have to produce on the ice. Nine more regulation wins during the season than the Anaheim Ducks boys. Let's go, all right? Three years in a row now. Four years in a row, we faced the California team. Two years in a row, we've uh, been kicked out in the first round. I'm not having three years kicked out in the first round to end my uh, tenure here in San Jose. So let's go, boys. First period. All right, you know what? That's fine. Uh, Kapanen on their first line left wing and Reed Boucher, our second line left wing. All right, that's fine for me. Uh, even shots, too. Second period. Uh, Corey Perry, they're, they're captain for sure, and they're superstar. All right, third period time. Come on now, boys. Let's go. Somebody step up for us. I could use a third period power play goal. Oh, we're not going to get it. Power play goal. Home ice. Come on, boys. There you go. Julius Honka. And we still have to name that uh, that captain, right? So, I haven't done... Oh, Michael, the goal! As I say it. As I say it. And Kevin Shattenkirk gets an empty netter. And the San Jose Sharks win game one with a nice, a nice third period comeback. I forgot to actually mention that. We still need to find a captain here. All right, so we're going into the uh, the offseason. McFarland's got an A, Shattenkirk's got an A, and DeCaul's got an A. And just as I say, we need a, a captain to step up. Honka, who was the talk last year with that big two-goal game, uh, I'm sure if we went through that first round, it would have been a lot more, but... Uh, he had a big game last year, and DeCall, the guy who's been great during the regular seasons, you know, but just hasn't been able to take over in the playoffs. He did it big for us there in game number one, so we'll see. I still don't have a captain named. He's got to prove himself in, in at least one round. He's got to take over this team. In that game, DeCall had three points. That's what I'm talking about. Katori had three points as well. Katori had four points. Hell yeah. Everyone's saying Logan Couture for uh, Katori was a bad trade. I never saw Logan get four points in game one. Of a playoff round. That's what I'm talking about second line. See this is why you, I want the depth. I know I agree with you guys that you need the first line scoring. But if they don't score in a game. Then at least we have a second and third line that can chip in. You know. So we're first for goals four in the NHL this year. We've done something right with this team. Come on. That's a big game one. I'm glad we're not trailing in the series. And we had no injuries in that game. I probably just jinxed us. Come on now, boys. Let's get let's get this second win at home. First period. All right. You know, that's good enough. They had 19 shots to eight. They're double out shooting us. Good job, Ernest Shirelli. Keep it up now. Second period. All right. There you go. Adam Ernie. Oh, where, what did I do there? There you go. Adam Ernie and Kirby Reichel. Fourth and third line centers stepping up big time for us. And they're not even natural centers. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Third period. We're going to need one goal. We're going to need one more for Ernest for the big easy. Let's go. There it is. Mangia Payne. Finally. There it is, boys. Merrill as well. Oh, third line goal, fourth line goal, first line goal, defensive goal, 
And then Ernest Shirelli in the net. There's the depth goal scoring right there, boys. There it is. Another big third period for the San Jose Sharks. So, man, Gia Payne gets his first playoff goal of his NHL career. It's a big one. All right, so DeCaul didn't show up in that game, but you see how the third, fourth, and first line showed up. So in game number one, the second line dominated. Game number two, first, uh, third, and fourth showed up, right? So I don't know. I, I see what you guys are saying about how you need superstars to win the cup. I still think you need a combination of both. Because even though we lost to LA last year, they didn't win the cup, right? So I think you need the superstars, but you can give yourself a better chance if you have the depth as well. All right? But maybe, you know, if you have to choose one or the other, Superstars over Depth is the better option. Maybe, maybe. I'll, I'll, I'll concede that. But now that we have both, I, my expectations are high, man. So we're going to California. All right. Bad memories here in California. Let's go. Let's erase them. First period. All right. All right. So they've taken the lead. Sam Reinhart and Nick Benino. Uh, Mangia Payne got one for us. All right. So we're still in this game. Second period. All right. We're still in this game. 24 shots to 18. They're out shooting us. But in game number one, we had a big third period comeback. If we have a captain, is he going to step up in this game? Reed Boucher? The second line, man. They've been clutch for us in the third period. Come on. It's not over yet, though. Ten minutes. Reed Boucher. Ah, Korpakovsky. Freaking fourth line right winger getting a goal for them. Is that going to be it? Is that going to be it? Yes, it is. All right. So, the Anaheim Ducks answer back. This is going to be a series. It's not going to be a quick uh, four and done type series. They're going to they're gonna answer back here. Uh, Reed Boucher from Marilyn Morrison. Mangia Payne from Walton and Nick Farland. So the first line chipped in. Second line got a goal. We missed out on that third goal and they scored a few on us. All right, don't worry about that, Ernest Shirelli. You played fine. Three goal, uh, three goal game, doesn't matter. It's one game. I'm fine with it, all right? Let's just continue here. Uh, 10 minutes in. I don't want to lose this. Hang on one second. All right, that's much better. So, game number four against the Anaheim Ducks. We have a 2-1 series lead. Everything's been going quite well so far. Ernest Shirelli, though, you know, after a bad game, well, it's not really a bad game, but for his standard, a bad game. You know he answers back with a good one. So, Ernest Shirelli, come on now. I need you. First period. All right, there you go. Man, Gia Payne again gets the goal. There you go. That's what we need out of our first line. Consistent goal scoring early in the game. Good job, first line. Now it's time for the, the depth to show up and help out. Kapanen got a goal for them as well. Second period. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Depth goal scoring. Man, Gia Payne comes through again for us. But Brendan Gallagher on the third. And we've seen Kirby Reichel come through. And Merrill gets another goal from the point. So you can see how the depth goal scoring is helping us out. And we got a third period lead by three. And, and we lost the last game because Ernest Shirelli let, allowed three goals. He's not going to allow uh, four goals this game. There's no way. I know how Ernest Shirelli plays. He's Mr. Consistency. If I could give him the captaincy, I would. Michael Del Call comes in. He puts it away for sure. And there you go. 3-1 series lead in round number one. Find a freaking lead. Finally, the San Jose Sharks are having a dominating playoff round. This is what I... For three years now, we haven't had this. This is finally... Mangia Payne gets his third from Walton and McFarland. Mangia Payne gets his fourth from Walton and Konechev. Gallagher gets his first from Mantha and Merrill. Merrill gets his second from Mangia Payne and Walton. And DeCall from Reed Boucher and Hamilton. So we are scoring goals, boys. Those stats were not misleading at the uh, beginning of the playoffs here. We have... The, the best goals for, the best goals against, and it's coming through in the playoffs here. The Anaheim Ducks, I don't want to jinx it, but when we looked at their roster, they don't have any of the superstars, and defensively, a lot of offensive defensemen, we can score goals on these guys. It's not about goals against against the Anaheim Ducks. It's about scoring goals. We can score goals, so let's go, boys. Home ice advantage. You know, the injuries are there. Let's just end this series right now. Here we go. First period. Yeah, baby. Reed freaking Boucher. All right, so... Thing about I like about uh, Reed Boucher is DeCall, DeCall. You know he's probably getting an assist in there. So the arguments for DeCall as captain, man, it's it's definitely taking a turn for the best in this series. Second period, yeah, baby, Reed Boucher, fucking playoff hat trick in an elimination game. Oh, that second line, boys. What did I say about that second line? You got to keep Reed Boucher and DeCall together, man. These guys are tearing it up. And when Mangia Payne and Walton aren't getting it done, Reed Boucher and DeCall are getting it done. Fucking hell, man. This is brilliant. I put together a great team this year. It could just be one good round, but still, they're coming through for me. Penalty kills. Nah, nah, son. Ooh, power play goal for Sam Reinhart. It's a late one. That's all right, though. Ernest Shirelli. Oh, wait a minute. Brendan Saad scores on Ernest Shirelli. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Come on now. Big easy. The big easy. Ah, oh, he puts it away. And Michael Dell call. The future captain, possibly. He gets the gate. Well, not the game winner, but the insurance empty netter. And the San Jose Sharks. 
deal with the Anaheim Ducks in five games. That's more like it, boys. Reed Boucher from Sean Couturier. Reed Boucher from DeCall and uh, Shattuck Kirk. Reed Boucher from DeCall and Couturier. DeCall from Clifford and Palmieri. All right, boys. That's what I'm talking about. That's a good goal scoring first round. Now, any injuries? Please, no, please, no, please, no, please, no, please, no, please, no, please, no. Yeah! And we have no injuries out of that first round as well. That couldn't have been a better first round. Obviously, we could have swept them, but I don't care about that. One loss on the road. Ernest Shirelli played great all five games. Two goals or less in every game that we won, except for the game that we lost. That doesn't matter. And our goals four, four goals four, four goals four, two goals four, five goals four, four goals four. We are scoring goals, boys. Hell yeah, man. I'm liking it. We have a good team this year. About freaking time. Been a while since the San Jose Sharks have moved off to the second round. Three years. But about time we made it back. The better team did win that series, no doubt. You looked on paper, they just didn't have it. And we're up against the Edmonton Oilers. The team that kicked us out of the second round three years ago with Brassat as their goaltender. If you remember, before the three rounds against the LA Kings, we had his... Oh, no, 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 sorry, yes. It was year one against the LA Kings when we beat them and we went off to face the Edmonton Oilers in round number two. And then two years after that, we lost to LA in both first rounds. Now... Back to the Edmonton Oilers again. So four years in a row, it's either been uh, a California team or the Edmonton Oilers. This is good. So the Young Guns in Edmonton is going to be a goal-scoring series. But before we end this, let's take a look at our stats. We don't need to look, like, take a look at the team stats, but the player stats of the playoffs. Because we do have to choose a captain. Now, maybe we should wait one more round before choosing a captain. You know, round one was uh, against the eight-seeded team. The Edmonton Oilers are a little bit better, but uh, this is where you guys can come in. So Del Call, man, eight points in five games played. Three goals, five assists. I, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, um, no, no penalty minutes as well. You guys want to call him captain? I wouldn't be opposed to it. Sean Couturier. All right. So, I mean, a lot of people criticize that trade for a uh, Logan for uh, Sean Couturier, but I didn't see a uh, Logan coming in with a uh, point per games, even though he's got no goals. He's alongside of DeCall and Boucher who are tearing it up. He's the assist man on that second line, like a Pete Walton and the defensive guy. Reed Boucher, five goals in five games played for six points. All right, he did have a hat trick, though, so one really good game in there. Merrill, though, what a great defensive, uh, I'll just look forwards right now, I'll get to him in a second. Uh, Walton, five assists in five games played, let's see many shots. Uh, he took one shot in that playoff. <laughs> he doesn't shoot it, man, that's hilarious, I want to know why. Man, Gia Payne, four goals, there's that first line coming through for us. All right, and McFarland, look at that, Anthony McFarland, only two points, but... The depth goal scoring came through for us. In round number one, the first line was decent with Mangia Payne, but McFarland could have done better. But our second line led us to the victory, right? With the depth goal, uh, goal scoring from the first line and even the third line. I mean, look at this. Palmieri had three points. Uh, Mantha, two points. Gallagher, two points. Ernie, two points. Reichel, one point. Clifford, one point. It's only five games played, but we did have the good, some good depth goal scoring. And also, defensively, Merrill with two goals. Shattenkirk with a goal. Honka with a goal. Five points. Yeah, I like... We had points from everywhere. And Morrison, two points. What the hell? Plus four. All right, so that's why I'm leaving Morrison in there. And Ernest Shirelli, man. We, I don't even need to praise this guy anymore. We know he gets it done. 1.92 goals against average. 4-1-0. And a save percentage above 94%. Good lord. Alright. So I think we should obviously keep the lines the exact way that they are right now. But if you guys have any suggestions, let me know. There's the Elite Eight. You have Edmonton versus San Jose. Colorado versus Vancouver. Calgary. I mean, uh, Carolina versus Florida. And the Tampa Bay Lightning versus the Ottawa Senators. So let me know what you guys think. And I will see you in round two.